Ansel Adams was an iconic American photographer known for his stunning black and white landscape photographs. He is considered the most important American landscape photographer of the 20th century and arguably the most well-known and beloved in U.S. history. The popularity of his work has only increased since his death. Adams' professional life was dedicated to capturing through his lens the pristine and often overlooked nature of the United States national parks and other protected conservation areas in the West. In addition to his remarkable work as a photographer, he was a committed environmentalist and an icon of the 20th century conservation movement. With his unparalleled mastery of light and landscape, he created timeless masterpieces that resonate deeply with the human spirit. Adams pioneered new techniques, transforming photography into a medium for conservation and contemplation. His enduring legacy serves as a testament to the power of art to move hearts and minds, reminding us of the sublime beauty and fragile majesty of our natural world. Join us on this fascinating journey as we delve into the life and work of Ansel Adams to discover the extraordinary vision he captured through his most iconic images. Get ready to be transported to breathtaking landscapes and frozen moments in time, where nature comes alive through the unique gaze of this photographic genius. Ansel Easton Adams was born on February 20, 1902, in San Francisco. He was the only child of Charles Hitchcock Adams and Olive Bray. His family initially enjoyed wealth thanks to his paternal grandfather, a timber baron, but faced financial hardship after losing most of it in the 1907 financial crisis. Adams didn't adapt well to school life. 
He was an extremely shy child, and his sensitivity was further compounded by his disfigured nose. The result of an accident he suffered at the age of four during the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. His low self-esteem was only made worse by teasing and bullying from classmates, and having moved school several times, his father took the decision to have his son privately tutored. Despite these challenges, he found solace in nature and music, teaching himself piano and later pursuing formal lessons. Initially aspiring to be a concert pianist, Adams eventually shifted his focus to photography in his 20s. He believed photography could convey the same emotions as music, particularly his love for the natural landscape. This passion was sparked at age 14, when he received a Kodak number no. one box brownie camera, igniting his lifelong journey to capture the beauty of nature through his lens. Adams joined the Sierra Club in 1919, an environmental group founded by John Muir in 1892. He worked as custodian of the Laconi Memorial Lodge in Yosemite, the club's HQ during summers, capturing landscapes during annual Sierra Nevada trips. The Sierra Club played a crucial role in Adams's early career, publishing his works and organizing his first solo exhibition in 1928. In 1926, he met Albert Bender, his first patron, who suggested creating a saleable portfolio titled Parmelian Prince of the High Sierras, which included his iconic monolith, the face of the Half Dome. Bender's support connected Adams with artists like Edward Weston. Adams married Virginia Best in 1928, expanding his ties to the art world through her family's gallery in Yosemite. The gallery, now the Ansel Adams Gallery, remains operational, a testament to Adams's enduring legacy in photography. Ansel Adams's artistic odyssey commenced in 1930 with his inaugural visit to Taos, New Mexico, where he encountered the mesmerizing landscapes and crossed paths with Paul Strand, a luminary of straight photography. Enthralled by Strand's modernist vision, Adams returned to San Francisco invigorated, dedicating himself wholeheartedly to the craft of photography. His groundbreaking solo exhibition at the Smithsonian in 1931 thrust him into the spotlight, while a pivotal meeting with Alfred Stieglitz in 1932 further solidified his status as a prominent figure in the photography world. The year 1936 marked another milestone with Adams's exhibition at and American Place, underscoring his evolving aesthetic and expanding influence. In 1932, Adams co-founded Group F64 with Edward Weston, advocating for the purity of unmanipulated photography. Through F64, Adams and his contemporaries championed a straightforward approach that stood in stark contrast to the prevailing pictorialist movement, emphasizing clarity, precision, and authenticity. Adams's contributions extended beyond his artistic endeavors. He played a crucial role in shaping photographic education through his writings, including the seminal Making a Photograph in 1935, which introduced his revolutionary zone system a method for precise exposure and development control. Despite grappling with financial challenges, Adams remained prolific, undertaking various commercial projects and commissions to sustain himself. His unwavering commitment to conservation and advocacy culminated in his instrumental role in the establishment of Kings Canyon National Park in 1940. Through his evocative imagery and tireless activism, Adams left an indelible mark on both the artistic and environmental landscapes, epitomizing the transformative power of art and advocacy combined. Throughout his career, Adams dedicated himself to elevating photography as an art form. In 1940, he co-established the photography department at the Museum of Modern Art, and curated its inaugural exhibition. His bond with Beaumont and Nancy Newhall led to collaborations on books and exhibitions in the 1950s and 1960s. 
Adams taught at the Art Center College of Design starting in 1941 and was commissioned by Secretary of the Interior Harold Ikes to photograph the national parks that same year. Although the project faced setbacks due to World War II, Adams secured a Guggenheim grant in 1946 to complete it. Despite his seminal work being largely behind him, he continued to refine his craft, reinterpreting earlier negatives with striking results. He co-founded Aperture magazine in 1952 and played a key role in establishing the Friends of Photography in 1967. A lifelong advocate for conservation, Adams remained active in the Sierra Club until 1971, serving as its president from 1934. Ansel Adams died in Monterey, California, in 1984, aged 82. In his honor, a section of the Sierra Nevada mountains that he loved so much was renamed the Ansel Adams Wilderness shortly after his passing. As a dedicated conservationist, insightful writer, inspiring teacher, and visionary photographer, Ansel Adams has left an indelible mark on future generations of artists, photographers, and environmentalists. His body of work stands as a testament to his deep connection with the natural world, capturing its grandeur and beauty in ways that continue to stir the soul. Adams, following in the footsteps of esteemed predecessors such as Carlton Watkins, Edward Mybridge, Timothy O'Sullivan, and William Henry Jackson, elevated landscape photography to new heights. Through his mastery of technical precision and unwavering passion for nature, he infused his images with a timeless quality that transcends generations. His influence extends far beyond the realm of photography, inspiring countless artists and photographers who share his reverence for the landscape. From Elliot Porter to Robert Adams, Edward Bertinsky to Richard Misrach, his legacy lives on in the work of those who seek to capture the essence of the natural world. Adams's photographs have become iconic symbols of the American wilderness, gracing the walls of homes and museums alike. 
They serve as a reminder of the beauty that surrounds us and the importance of preserving it for future generations. In 1980, Ansel Adams was honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Jimmy Carter. This prestigious award recognized Adams's profound contribution to photography and his tireless efforts in safeguarding the great American landscape. President Carter eloquently summed up Adams's legacy, stating, It is through Adams's foresight and fortitude that so much of America has been saved for future Americans. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one, see you later.